is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Day of Toys video. Today, we're back with another 2-in-1 AEW and Match Collection Series number 2 review on the brand new Series 2 Wardlow and MJF figures. Now, these had to go together in a review, which is why we did take Conti and Sting yesterday. If you guys missed that, definitely go check that out. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you would like to pick these up or any other AEW action figures, go over to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. I always tell people, never use code free ship. Always use code MDTOYS and select priority shipping and you will basically get priority shipping for free and it gets to you way quicker. If you use code free ship, it will take forever to get to you and you will be very disappointed with the shipping time. Use code MDTOYS get that priority shipping basically for free. Sometimes it covers it, sometimes it's maybe a dollar short, but it's way better than code free ship, man. I'm telling you just do it. But anyways, man, I'm excited to get another MJF and I'm really excited for the Wardlow. I think it's going to be kind of the star of the set. That, that fact remains to be seen. We do have to get him out of here, but as you guys can see, no luminaries in this section. It is just our standard unmatched collection packaging with the blue and silver, and it looks really good. I like the way both of them look in package. You got their images on the front here. Unmatched collection at the bottom, AEW logo at the top, of course. You got the silver foil on the side, and at the top, logos there, number 12 and 14 down here. On the back, you get images of Wardlow and MJF, which I think Wardlow's pretty underrated. Like, when I first saw him, I was like, oh, just a generic big guy, but damn, he's pretty impressive, man. I've, I've come to like Wardlow a lot. Down below, you got the rest of the figures in the wave. We have an AEW logo on the other side, and that pretty much wraps up our packaging for Wardlow and MJF, man. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and crack them out of the packaging and dive into what these guys are all about and see if this MJF compares to his other figures and see how Wardlow adds to our AEW figure collections. So here's MJF and Wardlow out of their packaging. Liking what I've got so far, right? I know one of these is pretty much just a repaint, and I know that Wardlow is not the most exciting character, man, but I think we have some impressive things going on with these. I'm actually really excited to dive into the review with you guys, and I'd love to know your thoughts on the new review style or the way that the presentation is and all those things. I got a few comments about it yesterday, but I do appreciate any feedback about it, and I would love to know some more about that down in the comment section below if you guys will. But man, these look pretty good. I'm excited to get into it, man. What we're going to do is run through Wardlow's accessories and Wardlow, then we'll take a closer look at MJF's accessories and MJF, and then we will wrap this thing up, man. But with all these things being said, let's dive into Wardlow first and get this review started off right. So for Wardlow's accessories, man, we don't get a ton. You know, AEW figures don't always come with a lot of accessories. I honestly can't tell you the figure that comes with the most accessories. Probably, I mean, I guess the ringside exclusive little bit of the bubbly Jericho, but I like what we got going on with the Wardlow. Let's dive into the first head sculpt. We do get two interchangeable head sculpts, and I like this one a lot. I think standard. It looks like Wardlow. You know, he's a big, handsome man. He's got the nice beard, the handsome haircut going on. Kind of like a man bun swirl going on at the top here. And I think it works out pretty damn good. I, I like this. I like all the colors and the variations and the beard texture and all that. I think it definitely captures the likeness. Very strong head sculpt. I'd say probably one of the stronger head sculpts we've seen from Jazzwares. Like, I think it wraps up nicely. You don't get like a fade haircut or anything like that, but overall, you do get the gentleman's look of the Wardlow. Now, I think this is where it's really strong, and that is in the Screaming Head Skull. Man, this looks really good. I love this. Wardlow's always pissed off. Wardlow's always angry, and this, this captures this beautifully, man. A good Screaming Head Sculpt, and it's not like this is the only Head Sculpt you get, right? You know, we've seen in the past where you only get one Head Sculpt, and it's the Screaming Expression, and then when you're trying to do photography and stuff, it ends up kind of ruining and, you know, not capturing the full moment because he's screaming the whole time. Why are you yelling? Jimmy Uso syndrome there, but one thing I just noticed is that that this one actually has a better fade on the back than this one, and you do kind of get that fade going on in there. So I guess I was a little bit wrong about that, but nonetheless, the screaming expressions look really strong, man. I love that. Looks like I may be missing a tiny bit of mustache beard up here, but at the same time, man, really strong head sculpts. I like it. The haircut's pretty much the exact same. Pretty consistent. I, lo I love it, man. If you get them up next to each other, it looks like the head on the, le the left is yelling in the head of the right. Like, it looks consistent across the border with, you know, the, the expressions. I think the likeness is totally there. Now, as far as interchangeable hands. You do get two fisted hands, so I know Kyle Peterson is nice there. You give him the double knuckle touch. We've seen hands like this before. And then out of the packaging, he comes with mic holding slash grabby hands. And that's all you need to know about that. You know, nothing unique about it. We've seen these hands multiple times, but he gets mic holding hands and interchangeable fists. Now diving into Wardlow himself, man, we already covered the head sculpt, and I think it, it just scales greatly with the body, man. I really like the body mold that they chose for this guy. I think he's gigantic. He looks really nice. He's not like overly gigantic, though. He's not 
rhino. You know what I'm saying? He's not just freakishly huge, even though he probably is in real life. I think it translates well. I think all his body sculpts and stuff look good. So the head is on here perfectly. I like the proportions that we got. I love this singlet torso. It is kind of a plain Jane gear, right? Like, it's not the most exciting gear. You got the black. You got the metallic green, the silver. And, you know, it's not the most exciting gear, but at the same time, it looks really good. Like, in person, really enjoy it. I think the black singlet looks really good. I think people that like to customize can use this body mold for some other guys. On the back, you do get the Wardlow guy going down the spine in a nice little font there. Really cool stuff right there. I like how you have, like, the continued, like, the, I don't know. It just scales well, man. This is sculpted on here nicely. It feels great. I like the size of the arms and the black wrist tape. Figure feels phenomenal in the hand, man. Just really does. I feel like I could pose this guy. I feel like I could put on a five-star banger with this figure, if you know what I'm saying. Like, it just feels really good in the hand. I like the way it poses. I love the way it feels. And this figure really shocked me, man. Like, again, coming in wasn't the big... Like, I like Wardlow. I really do like Wardlow. But coming in, I wasn't, like, super-duper excited for it. But at the same time, man, really blew me away. Love the way it came out. I think, you know, the knee pads are nice. They're kind of like soft goods. Really soft, like, pliable material here for your double-jointed knees. And then this boot mold looks like it is not reused. I don't think... These are not the same boots that we see on MJF, which we can compare. So, this is the boots on the MJ... This is the boots on the Wardlow, and this is the boots on the MJF. They are slightly different. If you guys can see, these are like more of a bigger guy boot. These are kind of smaller. So, you guys can see the widths and the lengths and the sculpts. They are just a bit different there. So, I think that's very nice attention to detail. They aren't just throwing the same boots on there, which I don't know if that affects cost or not or, or how those things work. But at the same time, I really like that they kind of gave us a different look for it. Stupid focus is getting away from me, but damn, man. What a great looking Wardlow figure. I think it looks great. Let's go ahead and stand up MJF next to him. I want to see what some figure comparisons look like right quick. So here's our unmatched Wardlow up next to every MJF so far, besides the Chase variant, which I do have mint on card. Do not have a loose one just yet. But you have the Series 2 unmatched MJF, the Series 2 unrivaled MJF, and the Series 6 unrivaled MJF, as you guys can see here. And I always loved this skin tone. I think this skin tone really brings a lot of life to the figures. I don't know why they got away from the Series 2 skin tone. I like this skin tone better than the rest. It has a more natural peachy tone. It looks a lot more accurate than the like gray olive that we get with a lot of figures nowadays. And like the, that, that seems to be what we're going for now instead of, you know, the Hangman, the MJF, the Moxley from series number two. But it is cool to see these all next to each other. Wardlow scales well with it. He's bigger. It looks nice. I think these scale well. And now you'll have a Wardlow to go next to your MJF figures. And then for some other figure comparisons, here is Lance Archer and Dustin Rhodes and Rusev slash Miro up next to your Wardlow figure. So, you know, some of the taller, more heftier characters here up next to Wardlow so you can, you guys can kind of see how he scales. I think he scales well. I like how it looks. I think they go well together. I don't have any issues with it. Let me know what you think of the scale down in the comment section below. Now, for the MJF figure, as far as accessories are concerned, you don't get a whole ton, but you do get more than Wardlow. First off, we do have an AEW microphone, and we've seen this a lot of times, right? You got the same microphone pretty much. It's got the AEW logo all the way around, which is always nice. It's printed on there pretty cleanly. I mean, it kind of looks like it may be scrunched up a little bit, but it's not a big deal. I like it. I think it works out great. I'm always down for for a microphone accessory. It adds to your collection. It adds to, to everything going on. So there's the AEW mic. He also comes with a few interchangeable hands, but they're two right hands. Both of them are his right hand. I accidentally fumbled it right there. Never fumbled in my football career. Write that to the bank. But here you guys can see he does have the, he does have his ring on here. You got the pinky ring on there, which looks really good. You guys can see the different sculpt. And one is a mic holding hand and one is a fist so he can you know he can cheat he can knock somebody out with it and he also has the mic holding hand it's cool to see you know not only the fist but a mic, mic holding hand with the ring in there so I, I i can appreciate that out of the packaging he also comes with mic holding hands so you get the mic holding hands or hands with the rings on there or the ring on there which which works pretty good i like it i think all that works out great and then the second accessory is his entrance coat now i think i agree with everybody here when uh you know uh, we, we don't really feel this right we're not big on this. You have his long robe. It's got the MJF scarf pattern going down. You got the red outline on the sides. It does say MJF on the sleeves. On the back, it does say better than you. And I just, I don't know, man. I feel like we've gotten away from cloth uh, heavily. Like, I don't remember the last time we saw a nice cloth accessory with our AEW figures. Hopefully, that's something we can work towards. But this just doesn't, isn't it, you know? I, I'd love to, see, I don't know where they could cut budgets. I don't know where we can really dive in and get those cloth accessories. But where we can do it, I hope they take advantage of it and they punch the ticket, man, because these accessories right here, they just don't do anything for me. Like, this is something that I, I don't put rubber accessories on my display for the most part. I just don't. I don't know why. I just don't like the way they look. They're very stiff. I like to change
change it up. I like to pose my figures around. I like to just grab a figure and pose it around. It's just something that I've always done, and it's hard to do so with rubber accessories like this. Sometimes you got to go with the rubber, and I understand it. I understand cost cuts and budgets and all these things, but at the end of the day, man, rubber is not where it's at, and I'd love to see some more cloth accessories from Jazzwares and AEW, but it does look nice. You get some good sculpt here. You got the MJF scarf pattern and stuff, but I'm just giving you my honest opinion on it. So diving into MJF, man, starting out at the head sculpt, not my favorite MJF head sculpt. I think the Series 2 is still slightly better. We will do a comparison between all three of them, but it actually is different than the Series 2 and the Series 6, as we will see. But as far as likeness, he's got like his cocky smirk going on. Nice hair sculpt and everything like that. I, I like, you know, some of the things going on with it, but as far as likeness, not my favorite MJF. I think we've seen better MJFs in the past. Going down into the torso, same MJF torso that we've seen. You got the lion tattoo over there. He does come with his signature elbow pad with the MJF in his little scarf plaid pattern, which I like. He does have kind of a boring gear. I would have loved to seen some different gears. You know, his bright green, his bright blue. Uh, any other gear I think would have been cooler, but seeing another black attire with the red lines, not the, the, the best attire to choose here. You know, he's similar to Randy Orton when it comes to his gear. You know, he changes it up slightly here and there, but I think there were some better gears that we could have seen. Another thing is that the elbow pad's not accurate. I believe it was an open elbow pad, and I'm pretty sure he wore hand tape at this event, so no hand tape, no open hole in the elbow pad, but gear's kind of boring. You do have the black knee pads and black boots, very standard, very, you know, evil, very evil housing. So overall, I mean, it's just not, it's not one of those figures that excites a lot of people, but if you guys missed out on other MJFs, you know, he, he's gonna fly off shelves. He's one of those guys that, uh, he's one of the pillars of the company, right? He's an AEW original, and so they are going to give him all the good stuff. They're gonna pump him out. They're gonna put him in waves because, you know, people sell, man. So for your MJF figure comparisons, guys, we do have the Unmatched Series 2 in the middle, the Unrivaled Series 2 on the left, and the Unrivaled Series 6 on the right. And you guys can see all three facial expressions are different. They are not the same at the slightest. Like, really, they do change up a pretty good amount. I'd say these are probably pretty much the same, just colored differently or whatever, but I still like the Series 2 the most. I think it has the most likeness. It looks like they probably made him a little bit taller here, right? Like, it seems like the Series 2 may be a little bit short compared to the others. But overall, I just like the skin tone better. I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but I like the skin tone of the Series 2 Unrivaled better than the Series 6 Unrivaled and the Series 2 Unmatched. But you guys can let me know your favorite MJF figure down below. I'd say the Series 2 Chase is the best. You know, it's the pink gear, it's the good skin tone, but it is a 1 of 1,000, so, you know, I'm probably going to keep that in on a card, but maybe one day I will get another loose one. Trying to get a full Chase mock and loose collection, but right now I'm failing miserably and it hurts my feelings. And that pretty much wraps up Wardlow and MJF from AEW and Match Collection Series number two, man. Had a lot of fun with the review. I'm really, really impressed with the Wardlow. I think if I were gonna recommend these figures, I would recommend Wardlow over MJF. I think that MJF is totally skippable if you have the Series 2 and the Series 6 from the Unrivaled Collection. If you're a completionist, then it speaks for itself, you know, I, I understand it completely. But Wardlow's a really good character. I think you need it for your different collections. I think you'd have a lot of fun with him in a pick fed a stop motion for a display for anything man he's really awesome i think you guys are gonna like him a lot especially if you're a big in hand feel kind of guy you know you, you pick up the figure you really like how a figure feels in the hand and the heftiness and the way it moves i think you'll really enjoy the wardlow and i know i have a lot of guys out there that appreciate that about a figure so i would highly recommend that man but overall if you guys would like to grab them go over to ringside collectibles wrestlingfigures.com use promo code md toys to save yourselves 10 percent at the end of the day mjf again pretty much skippable but but Wardlow is totally worth the pickup. I still like the MJF figure. I just think that he has other figures that are better than this one. And I would recommend those over this one. But, of course, this is our first MJF from the Unmatched series. We will see more of him. He is the Chase variant in this set. But, uh, yeah, kind of a skippable release there. But that is going to wrap up this review, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Again, now that we have our Unmatched Series 2, we can dive into the last two figures in the set. We can dive into all those different things. And then we can get into our top 10, top 5s, top different things about the AEW wave as a whole in the entirety of 2021, man. Let me know all your thoughts of that down in the comment section below, man. But I'm getting out of here. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. If we can, let's try to get this video to 500 likes, man. Big like goal. Go for it. Smash the like button. I really appreciate it. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like MJF when he decided to have a damn rubber coat, Brad. You cross the line.